Welcome to the Deep Post Sports Chat. I'm sports editor Drew Rubenstein and I'm joined with WVU football beat reporter Ed Owens. And Ed, we're a couple days away from the Mountaineers' first uh, road game of the season at Oklahoma. And um, these two teams played late in the year last season in November when, when Tavon Austin ran for a, a school record 344 yards. Um, but a lot's changed for both teams. Obviously, Tavon's gone. And just from hearing both Dana Holgerson and Bob Stoops speak, uh, their, their, their teams are completely different, and it sounds like the two teams are expecting completely different things. Let, let's start with Trevor Knight, though. What does he bring to Oklahoma, and, and what are uh, uh, some of the concerns for WVU with him now under center? Yeah, uh, Oklahoma quarterback Trevor Knight, uh, he, he made his first start last week, and it was a pretty good one. Uh, dual threat quarterback, rushed for 100 yards, led the team in rushing. Didn't really open up the passing game, but uh, Dana Holgerson yesterday said it was really to be expected that they didn't. They kind of kept a, a short leash on him, really just wanted him to kind of get in there and manage the offense. He did a pretty good job with it. It's really going to make the... Uh, the linebackers in particular, according to uh, defense coordinator Keith Patterson, really kind of be assignment focused and, and try to keep tabs on them. How much do you think we know about Paul Millard and Trevor Knight and how much more are we going to know after Saturday's game? I don't think you know too much about <laughs> either one of them. Uh, I, I think just like Oklahoma tried to keep a leash on Knight, I don't think Millard really did too much uh, in the offense. He attempted uh, 25 passes, which is which is obviously out of character for WVU's offense. They didn't really let him do too much. He also went out just kind of managed the game. Good reviews. Dana said he was happy with his decisions. He was happy with what he did. But uh, I don't really think you saw too much out of either one of these quarterbacks just yet. With WVU's offense, it's going to be interesting to see. And, and I don't know if you've got a feel for what sorts of wrinkles could come in the cards. I thought it was interesting that Bob Stoops did say WVU kept things vanilla and we're expecting a completely different uh, type of offense Saturday at, at Oklahoma. He seemed to indicate that WVU really didn't show much against William and Mary. And even though Dana's not saying that, Stoops is saying, I know he's got something up his sleeve. Yeah, if you look at last year and what they did with Tavon, obviously they they pulled a couple tricks out and, and put him in the backfield, and that really caught Oklahoma off guard. I think with the familiarity there between the teams, uh, Dana's going to want to do something different. That said, with the team, with the configuration they have, I don't know what different they can really do. Uh, they ran the ball a lot because that's where their experience lies. That's where their strength lies right now. They're still trying to figure themselves out at quarterback. They're still trying to figure out what they have at receiver. So until they really have a good handle on that, I don't know how much different they can, they can be. Staying at quarterback, how long is the leash for Paul Millard? He's obviously the guy right now. He's going to start Saturday's game barring something completely unexpected. But it's midway through the second quarter. WVU's offense is struggling. They're down 14-3. to Do they consider Clint Trickett? I guess how comfortable do you think WVU's coaches are with Paul Millard at this point? I think they're comfortable with him. Uh, I think the one thing that they've said so far has been the communication and, and getting the plays called. He can read the, the play calls from the sidelines, get them communicated quickly to the offense, and that's what they like about him. Uh, that's the reason Trickett didn't play as much last week. I don't know how much progress he's made in that in a week. But that said, if the offense isn't working, I don't see them hesitating for a second to roll the dice, change things up. Uh, Holgerson's committed to a two-quarterback system for now. He wants to give them both a fair shot. So if something's not working for him, I don't think they'd wait too long before they went in another direction. I think we'll, we'll learn a lot about WVU's quarterback situation after this game. But this is a young team. You mentioned all of the new pieces, the inexperience. You are playing at Oklahoma. I think the Sooners are something like 82-5 and five at home under Bob Stoops. Uh, Dana, without, without even prompting, mentioned how close the fans are to the sidelines. Just playing in a venue like that with such an inexperienced team, um, what, what, what are the challenges there and uh, how, how's WVU handling them? Uh, I think particularly on the offensive side, obviously, and it goes back to play calling, getting the calls in. You're going to have 85,000 screaming fans right on top of you. Uh, an inexperienced offensive line, especially in the middle, uh, inexperienced starting quarterback. Uh, young receivers where they're going to be the furthest away from the play and, and trying to get those calls. So I think that communication is going to be absolutely huge for them. And, and nerves. I mean, a lot of the guys uh, were there at Texas last year, and, and they kind of experienced that big game atmosphere. But what Dana said yesterday, there's 30 or 35 guys who, who haven't even made a road trip yet. So to have your first road trip be Oklahoma, that's a pretty tall order. Defensively wise, you, you mentioned Trevor Knight, and, and he is a, a dual threat quarterback. That said, coming out of William & Mary, I didn't get the sense that WVU was totally pleased with its defensive performance. It seemed like a lot of fans thought that, aside from three or four plays, West Virginia's defense played well. But speaking with the, the coaches and players, you got a totally different sense. 
Yeah, they weren't too upset with the play. They were upset with those three or four plays that you mentioned. Uh, Dana said it himself, you can't play defense with 10 guys. Uh, Keith Patterson talked about assignment football and, and staying on, on your targets. I mean, it, it's something that where they did have lapses, William & Mary exploited them. And if a team like William & Mary can do it, Oklahoma certainly can this weekend. Right, that'll be interesting to watch. Ed, thanks for joining us, and please continue to check thedpost.com. We'll have a vlog uh, up and running for the entire Oklahoma game, and then we'll be back with a post-game report after the game. Thanks a lot.